All right, so now in this video, we're going to add some flying debris elements in the background. It's kind of make it look like this action hero is in the middle of a chaotic battle or explosions or whatever like, like that's going on. Um, so I have an image here. It's another stock image of just this random particle effect that's basically it's just a bunch of dust and debris uh, on a white background. Again, on a white background, easy to extract. So first thing is I'm going to remove the color um, just by doing a simple desaturate. I'm just going to press shift command U, that be shift control U on Windows. And you can see it um, goes ahead and takes all the color out. Now I'm going to do a shift delete and we're going to do a fill on this, but I'm going to do a fill with white and we're going to do in an overlay blend mode at 100%. Now what that's going to do is force a lot of the lighter areas, lighter gray areas to white. Uh, it won't do anything to the existing white areas, but it will force a lot of the lighter areas to white, thus lessening the overall debris effect here. So when I click OK, you can see what it does there. <clears throat> so that looks pretty good, but we need to darken up what is there. So we're going to do the same fill, but this time we're going to do it with black instead of white, still in overlay, 100%. And there we go. And then we're just going to use levels just to kind of darken up the contrast overall. And I think that will work. Okay. So now, um, got a few elements that are close or right up on the edge of the document here. So I'm actually just going to use the lasso tool just to make a, a rather loose selection around everything. And we'll go select and choose inverse and then just simply fill that area with white. So there's no more particles around the, um, right up on the edge of the document there. Now I need to extract this from the background here. And we're just going to use a, a simple channel trick because this is now just a simple black and white image. I'm going to load the brightness luminosity basically as an active selection, which is the background. So just command click on the RGB thumbnail in the channels panel, loads the white area as an active selection. Then you'll just simply go under the select inverse. And it, you could go ahead and copy this area to a new layer, but it's going to pick up some of that residual white background, uh, which I don't want it to do. So I'm actually going to create a new layer altogether and then just fill it with, fill the selection with black. That way it picks up none of the background and we've got all this area here. Now you could increase the density just by making a duplicate or two of that layer. Uh, if you wanted to make it a little bit, in fact, I'm just going to make one duplicate and then merge it down by pressing Command E, and that just um, increases the density of it a little bit more. All right, so now let's take that uh, particle element, do and drag it on over, and let's put it behind the subject, um, of course, in front of the background image. And let's just go ahead and scale it and just kind of have it look like this. Now, one thing I like to do is... Use the warp feature. Now, we well, obviously want this to look like debris that's flying behind him, like from an explosion. So once I have it in position, I'm going to actually right-click on it or control-click and choose warp and then just kind of push these elements out like this. Now, what warping does is it stretches the pixels of whatever you're um, warping here. In this case, it's these particles. And as it stretches, it's going to have the, in the interesting side effect of almost kind of like a motion blur to it. And I can kind of sculpt it in different directions here. And I think that that'll probably work right there. So again, something you can play with, just uh, just playing with that warp feature and trying different things with it um, in that regard. Now, here's a really cool trick. Now, the, um, the color of the particles is obviously very, very dark. So let's go ahead and lock the transparency real quick and just make that a lighter gray fill, perhaps. Uh, a little bit darker than that. Not quite 100%, but let's do like 90. I think that's what I chose. Is this one right here? It's about 80, about 85% gray. That, that looks pretty good. Okay. So now, I'm going to load the shape of, let's go ahead and re-unlock that transparency. I'm going to load the shape of the layer as an active selection. I'm just going to hold down Command key, Control if you're on Windows, and click on the, the layer thumbnail of that particle layer. You can see every, it's, it's entirely loaded as an active selection. Now, grab a selection tool. I'm just going to grab the rectangular marquee tool. It doesn't matter which tool. It just needs to be a selection tool. And then we're going to use the arrow keys to nudge the selection over. I'm going to hit the right arrow key a couple of times and then the up arrow key once. And you notice what it's done is that it's offset the selection 
to the original layer. Notice how this got this little area here. So now what we're going to do is go under the select menu and choose inverse. Now that area that's just out was, was just outside of selection is now the selected area and the main particle elements are not selected. So what I'm going to do is grab a lighter gray color here in the swatches panel, like right there. And oh, let's go ahead and lock the transparency of that layer again. I guess I shouldn't have turned it off. Let's go ahead and turn it back on. And we're just going to fill the selection with that light gray area. Oh, let's actually go a little bit lighter there. That's something like that. Now, what we've got, let's get into the darker areas. So you can see what it's done. So some areas is going to be a little bit more prominent. So notice what it's done here. It's created this edge. So right there, that's before. I just undid it a couple of times. But if I go ahead and fill that area in, notice what it's done is it's given a little bit of dimension to those particles, like the light is coming from back here and thus gives those particles just a little bit of dimension to it. It's kind of a cool little trick there. Um, and I think ultimately I'm going to drop the layer opacity just a little bit more as well. Let's put that at around 90. And then one more thing we're going to do with the particles. Another cool trick. Go in the toolbar and go down here and where the blur tool is and, and choose the smudge tool. Now here I'm just using this kind of... Uh, um, scatter brush right here, but notice up here in the options bar, um, you can choose any brush you want, soft edge or scatter brush and like that. I'm going to set the strength here to about 25%. 25, maybe, yeah, that's fine. Um, and I'm just going to go and paint on a few random particles and just smudge them. And that's going to give them a little bit of a motion blur to them. So not all the particles look static. We're just actually throwing a little bit of motion in here by throwing a little bit of a blur on him. Just like that. Ac my transparency is locked. That's why I'm not getting the full effect here. There we go. Okay. Don't forget about that transparency lock. But now I can go over here and paint on these few random particles and give them a sense of motion. Just like that. Let's go and give this one a little bit of a movement there. There we go. Pretty cool. All right. So it's a neat, quick and easy way of giving two-dimensional elements kind of a, a three-dimensional look by adding another dimension or another side to them and giving that little bit of an edge light to it. So it's just a subtle little trick, but <clears throat> really sells the effect. <clears throat> okay, uh, one more thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a new blank layer above this particle layer, but it's notice it's still underneath the main subject layer. And I want to get a little bit of a dark fade at the bottom here. So I'm going to grab my gradient tool and making sure I'm using foreground the transparent gradient. And we're doing a radial normal. Uh, I want to set my foreground color to black. So press D keyboard. And on that blank layer, I'm going to change its blend mode to overlay. And we're just going to add a couple of gradients here in the bottom. And that's going to give me a little bit darker fade just to kind of help, you know, help the subject stand out a little bit more on that background there. So that looks pretty good. All right. So there we have our particle elements and gradients on the bottom just to kind of help the, uh, the subject stand out a little bit more. Now, in the next video, we're going to add, finally, the color element of this design, which is the sparks. The, of course, obligatory in almost every movie poster these days, but there's, you always have these little cool kind of movement moving sparks at the bottom or sense of movement because they're blurred and such like that. But that is the effect we're going to add in the next video just to kind of help finish things up.